What's up, what's up? Real MVPs, Ricky Widmer here, and we're back for another edition of MVP Games Live right here on either Twitch or YouTube. My name is, like I said, Ricky Widmer, and I'm joined, as I always am, with my beautiful but a little bit sleepy co-host today, Soapy Muffins. Oh my god, all I did was fucking <laughs> fall asleep for five minutes. Come on, man, leave me alone. You know what, Soap's like, I. it's one of those things where it's like, I'm not mad at you, but like, when it happens, you gotta just roll with it. Um, as we were going to start, I'm about to hit the live button. I'm like, okay, I've got everything set for today's show, and I just hear, I hear a noise out of Soap's, and I was like, all right, um, he must have laughed at something. So I asked, like, oh, what are you laughing at? And I got no answer. And then I was like, oh, that wasn't a laugh. That was a snore. Um, but it was only five minutes. It's not like we missed the entire show or anything, which would have been um, a lot worse. But, uh, yeah, I got, I got to rib you. got to rib you when I can, just like I would expect you, Soapy, to rib me if I fell asleep right before the show. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, like, to be honest, if you fell asleep, there's nothing I could fucking do besides <laughs> me just sitting here being like, hey, man, come on, man, get up. Hey, man, come on. As I'm just sitting here. I'd be on camera just. <sighs> no, more like I'd be sleeping like this. Like when I, I don't know about you, Soaps, but uh, when I sleep in a seated like position, I've got what I call the grandpa posture um, or like the dad after Thanksgiving posture where it's just like you're a little bit slouched. Your head is just kind of like hanging there a little bit. And then you're just doing one of these. You're just kind of just sitting there like you're like you're barely even alive. Um, but you guys don't want to hear us talk about how we sleep. You want to hear us talk about gaming news. We got not a jam-packed show, but a pretty good show today. Some good things um, coming out today and an interesting conversation at the end. Before we get into everything, though, let's get the housekeeping out of the way. Number one, the Discord channel. Go ahead and join it. If you haven't already, if you haven't, you're behind the eight ball because it's a great community. We're talking about games, TV, movies, sports. We're talking about this every single day in the Discord. Link down below in the description or in Twitch chat, exclamation Discord to do that right now. Second, if you want to support us, make sure to go to patreon.com backslash MVP vids, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, four different levels. For you to support us if you choose to. You can also support us by throwing us a sub on Twitch. Or throwing us that Prime Gaming that Amazon is going to give you each and every month. Uh, subs and Prime Gaming subs get the same rewards as a bronze patron um, for our Patreon uh, tiers. Then the last thing, we're on Twitch every Monday through Friday. Twitch.tv backslash MVP vids. But we are also on YouTube at MVP Entertainment and Soapy. Getting right into the action today, everything that we've got going on, the first thing we are going to talk about, you are very excited about this. This is a very, like the first topic I want to say is very soapy based. And then the second one is more of me based because the second one I was like, hmm, I don't know if soapy's ever played this game for me. I'm excited about the second one. Um, so that's why I know it's a me based topic, but for the first one, soapy, over the weekend, it was announced that uh, Minecraft is getting a bit of an update. Um, they sent out a tweet that said, We're infinitely excited to announce the Caves and Cliffs update, the update that rocked the world. Join us now, if you haven't already, and keep watching the rest of the show for part two of Caves and Cliffs announcement. This is from the, like, I think it was the Minecraft showcase um, or Minecraft Live um, over the weekend, yeah. Soapy. I don't have to introduce this one, Soaps. You are the Minecraft expert here. So let's break it down. You tell me, why should Minecraft fans be excited for Caves and Cliffs speaking to a non-Minecraft player like myself? Uh, simple. The thing that uh, every fan has been asking to get updated since uh, 2011 has finally been updated. Which is? Because Caves. Oh, okay. Uh, caves. We've, we've been begging. We've been on our hands and knees. Like, please, Mojang. <laughs> Mm -hmm. cave update they're like mm, big water and it's like no man stop we don't want the ocean update why have caves been asked for for so long <laughs> because 2011 was the last time anything with a cave was updated oh, okay so it's just like because it's been uh, nine years and you're like come on touch the cave again yeah okay because the whole thing was they added abandoned mine shafts which are cool but pointless mm -hmm. then they added strongholds and mm -hmm. it's like okay kind of kind of cool but 
still kind of pointless. Yeah. And they were just like, hey, man, can you update this? And they're like, no, B update. And everyone's like, no, fuck off. Stop fuck off with the B update. <laughs> Fix cave. <laughs> Fix cave now. Well, they're getting that fix because this update is called caves and cliffs. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm just happy they're fucking doing this because mm-hmm. uh, with the generated caves that they have, they actually look cool as fuck now, mm-hmm. which is something that uh, I'm excited for, at least. Well, why, yeah. why are you up, up, like, why are you excited for it? Because this is a topic also that, like, I feel bad on my side because I haven't played Minecraft. I know what Minecraft is, but I haven't played it. I haven't watched it. It's like a game to me that is like, that is not my wheelhouse. That is not a game I'm going to watch. That's not a game I'm going to play. Um, and that's why I'm like, with me, I am so out of my wheelhouse right here. Yeah, no, and I get it. And the whole thing with, like, why everyone should be excited for this is because the fact of they, during the Minecraft Live, they showcased all of the stuff that's in the update, mm-hmm. at least a lot of it, and yeah. they're adding new st- stuff for mountains, because mountains are also pretty fucking boring, too. Mm-hmm. Like, we're going to be honest here. Yeah. Um, They're fixing how a lot of, like, my- mountain biomes work. They are fixing how a lot of the cave systems work. Because obviously there's still going to be some boarding caves. They're not all going to be the super huge ones we can bump into now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's something that, you know, they're going to be these vast caves. Um, There's new mobs being added into the game. Specifically, uh, the new, technically new, like, boss mob that's getting added called the Warden. Which, uh, I saw that thing and I'm like, man... I didn't know I was playing fucking Amnesia in Minecraft, because, man, that is one spooky boy. Well, because, like, the, here's a question from uh, the, I'm going to say it again, the non-Minecrafter in the room of, I always thought of Minecraft as, like, it didn't really, like, does it have a story? Like, is there a point besides just, like, hey, I'm going to destroy things, make things, and kind of, like, create things and be creative while playing this game? Oh, yeah, no, I mean, that's that's the whole game. Okay. It's just, it's mining and crafting. Mm-hmm. But, like, the whole thing I never got were, why are, what's the point of there being enemies, then, if it's just mining and creating and seeing, like, how creative you could be with the map that's given, like, to you? Well, it's to add, it's to add challenges. Like, okay. that that's the whole thing. It's, you know, okay. if you don't want, if you don't want a hostile mob, you can just play on peaceful. Good point. Good point. I didn't even know there was a peaceful mode. That's how much of a yeah. Minecraft noob I am. Um, would it be Would it be interesting to Ricky plays Minecraft for the first time? Because I have literally never touched anything with it. I mean, hey, you know, you could you could probably find something. <clears throat> like, but the one thing I will bring up about the update is uh, Polygon has here kind of what you've already said, Soapy. But uh, after the update, caves will be generated with much more variation and contrast. Thank you, Tablet, for uh, for refreshing. I totally wasn't reading that. Um, let's see. With variation and con- contrast with features like waterfalls, cave lakes, huge caverns, um, they'll have more variety, like you said, with lush caves, dripstone caves, crystal geodes, um, and other new environments. Um, there will be new blocks like um, statulites and staglomites. I think I said that right. Um, a skulk sensor that reacts to movements via redstone signals. Um, players will also have archaeology to help to keep them busy and can build items like a telescope. Um, this is something that you already mentioned, the warden, which is also a new hostile mob. I mean, for me, being an outsider, this is just like you said, more variety. It's cool to have... Something that, like, the thing that I liked most, Soapy, hearing you talk about it um, over the weekend was when you told me about it, I could hear the excitement in your voice. And if this is something that the Minecraft fan base has been asking for for nine plus years, um, it's good that it fucking finally got added to the community and that they're able to experience the now new variety 
of these caves and hopefully we get to see videos of uh, people doing some creative things um, with these new caves. Um, any any final thoughts you have on this? Because yet again, this all three of these are going to be kind of like short, shorty but goodies before our big discussion. Uh, I mean, I guess my final thing is I can't wait for the until the update comes out. Mm-hmm. The only problem is they didn't really say when it's coming out. It's basically all they did at Minecraft Live was tell us, like, um, hey, this is what we've been working on. The age-old classic of, here's the update. We'll let you know when it's coming. Yeah, well, because I saw something where it's uh, it was reported as summer of 2021, and I'm like, I really gotta wait that long for a game update, man. Come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Part of me feels like I hate that where it's like if you're going to if you're going to give this much information about an update, at least have a like focus time. You know what I'm saying? Like if it's just something of like all you're revealing is that like if it's just like a name reveal. All right. You don't really have to have a date because you didn't really give me a lot of information. But if you're giving me, hey, we're going to have this variety of here. We're going to have these new blocks. We're going to have this new enemy. I'm starting to think like, okay, you have the update pretty figured out. Can I get a time period? Can I get like coming holiday, coming um, basically like coming winter of 2021? Just even coming 2021 would work. Like, there's a part of me hearing you say that it's like, you're given all this information, you can't give, like, a a time frame, unless they feel like, hey, we still got stuff to work on, and we don't know exactly when we're going to be done with it. Yeah, and I mean, and there is a very strong chance that, like, they don't actually know when they're going to be done with the game. Because mm-hmm. <clears throat> obviously, you know, there may be other things they're adding into it that we haven't seen yet. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, they talked about the archaeology stuff. The only thing is, we didn't. I, from what I saw, we didn't really see any of the archaeology th- stuff. It was more of like a, it was more of like a, hey, look how cool the uh, the areas look. Like, mm-hmm. look how cool some of the mobs look. Yeah. Because um, I'm trying to remember what they're called. It's it's the fucking it's the fish slash reptile thing that Mudkip's based off of. I think it's like Exwaddle or whatever their fucking names are. You mean like the real? The real yeah. version, okay. I was like, the real life version. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what they're called. It's fucking spelled like A-E-X or something like that. I don't know how to fucking spell it. Mm-hmm. I'm looking it up. You said M- Mudkip is based off yeah. it? Um, yeah. It, I don't know how to fucking say the name of it either. Because it looks like it'd be like some really weird way of saying it. So it so. says here Mudkip, Mudkip is based off of the axel 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 a x o l o t y l um it's a yep. species of amphibian spe- specifically a salamander yeah uh they're putting those in the game okay that's pretty cool so they're so, also yeah. really cute in the game too so just like in real life <laughs> so yeah just fucking uh more more enemies, more things to interact with, more blocks, and, you know, Minecraft people, you finally got caves. Um, it's been nine years, like Soap says, and now you finally um, have it to love it and enjoy it. Soapy, now to move on to the next thing, what I'm excited for. When I heard this announced today, I was like, holy shit, cannot wait for it. We are getting, Soapy, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered. Coming out later this year. Polygon has it for you. They say Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. The debut new racing series of Burnout Maker Centurion Games is being remastered for release in November. Stellar Entertainment, which led the 2018 remaster of Burnout Paradise, is behind this one as well. For Nintendo Switch, PS4, Windows PC, and Xbox One. The new version will also feature cross-platform multiplayer taking further advantage of the analog or the auto log feature um, that drove hot pursuit to several awards. The opportunity for cross play was like, Oh man, we have to do this. Chris Roberts, creative director of stellar entertainment told Polygon, you know, we need to get this on as many formats as we can get everyone connected and battling it out. This is the second remaster we're doing. Robert said, so we're tr- we're treating it with the utmost respect first, but then we're thinking about what feature 
really will sing with the modern audience. Um, Autolog is a type of multiplayer social network that allows for all sorts of convenient, auto-synchronous pickup and play moments. Um, was the big reason Hot Pursuit was a multiplayer game of the year selection for many in 2010. Um, the uh, the next Need for Speed titles embraced Autolog and its ca- and its capacities, and EA even carried the concept into its Battlefield franchise for a time, expanding its offerings to weekly challenges, contests, photo mode sharing, um, and more to a pan council audience. Um, is part of a natural evolution um, in uh, Criterion developed titles and studio vice president Matt Webster. So I'm excited about this because fucking Need for Speed, Hot Pursuit. I fucking love this game when I was, let's think, I got to think 10 years ago, when I was 20 years old. So think of a young college Ricky playing Need for Speed, Hot Pursuit, basically running from the cops, racing people running from the cops and like for me that like there were two need for speed games that were really big with me the first one i gotta look it up because like in my it's one of those where it's like i can remember playing it i can remember what the cover looked like can't remember which one it was i think it was most wanted that was most wanted and then need for speed hot pursuit those were like my main need for speed games soapy this is where i don't know about you Are you excited for Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, or is this for one where you're like, you know what, Need for Speed is cool, but not really my jam? Nope, I think Soapy got interrupted, so I'm going to go and gush a little bit more while we wait for Soapy. Um, I just, I love this game. I just asked you, I was like, how are you excited? Are you excited for this? Is this like, are you excited for this, or are you like where I was with the Minecraft stuff when it comes to Need for Speed? Uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm more on the side of what you were for Minecraft of like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, that's kind of cool, but like, you know, doesn't really affect me. My whole thing is I don't really care for racing games. Okay. Not a Forza like, guy? I, nah. <laughs> well, because my whole thing was the, I think the only racing game I ever actually enjoyed mm-hmm. was, I don't even remember what it's fucking called. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to be like, my favorite race of games is Mario Kart. I'm not fucking w- pull that one out. Because <laughs> gonna... every human being loves Mario Kart. They just hate to admit it. <laughs> Did you hear what someone, I think it was someone at Nintendo said about that that Mario Kart that we saw at uh, at the Nintendo Direct that we talked about? Remember, like, the little toys that could race around the living room? Uh, someone yeah. at Nintendo was like, yeah, that's basically like our new system that we're coming out with. Oh, okay. <laughs> they, they compared the little toys that race around the little floor um, as being called a system. And I was like, no, Jack. Like, uh, Although I thought it was dope as shit, and I wish I had the space for it, and I wish I could um, set up my own Mario Kart track in my house, you didn't come out with a system. You came out with toys for kids. It's okay, though, because it's going to sell like hotcakes. Okay. I found out the game. The only mm-hmm. racing game I've ever actually enjoyed Okay. More than Mario Kart was a uh, Midnight Club Los Angeles. Oh, okay. and even if that, I don't even think that's the right Midnight Club. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just I only remember Los Angeles. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I totally agree with Dave. He brings up a point I didn't think of. He says, "Love Need for Speed." Um, I feel like if Minecraft was around when we were like five, um, I would have loved the game. And I totally agree with him. Like the thing with Minecraft that, like, for me, it was like. Maybe it's because I was I was so old at the time where it's like, a, eh, it doesn't really appeal to me. Where like Dave says, if like if we were five, it would have been like, oh, OK, like this game is entertaining to us because you're more, I don't know, more imaginative as a kid. I mean, it just it seems like an aesthetic kind of like Fortnite to me, where like Fortnite has that more of that like uh, cartoony style that appeals to kids. We're like an Apex Legends um, I don't even want to say Valorant because Valorant kind of has a cartoony style, just not um, as far as uh, Fortnite. But like an Apex or a PUBG doesn't really fucking sway into uh, the young kids um, as much. But yeah, Need, Need for Speed. This has been a franchise, Soapy, that like, so it was Need for Speed and then Juice um, were the two that I was kind of playing along with Dave uh, as Dave will 
let people know. I did lose his uh, his uh, punch bug, his beetle. Um, I believe, let me get this straight, it was a black punch bug with uh, green on the sides, like green de- decals on the side, and then he had pink neon um, underneath the uh, door panels. Um, it was a dope car. I lost it in a uh, sprint race with uh, fucking, what was his name? He was the second boss, like, Big T or something like that. I'd have to look it up. Um, But yeah, for me, Need for Speed has been... I've been playing it since I was like 13. Uh, Played Underground, which came out in 2003. Um, Then Most Wanted, 15-year-old Ricky playing that around uh, 2005. Um, You had Carbon, which was pretty good. Um, Got out of it for a little bit, and then boom, Hot Pursuit um, in 2010. Um, was probably my main, like that and most wanted um, were were my jams because the thing that I liked about Hot Pursuit was maybe it was because it kind of reminded me of GTA in a sense where you could just be driving down the, like there would be times where it's like, okay, I did a race, I finished the race, you go through that fucking, uh, that, that finish line and then it's like immediately, boo, all right, the cops are on you. I have to now escape the cops before I can go ahead and go on with the next thing I was going to do. And like for me, 20 years old, I was like, shit, like this is, this for me was like putting a little bit of a realism onto Need for Speed. Because you think about all these Need for Speed juice, all these racing games that are kind of like the illegal street racing games. Well, of course, if you're illegally street racing, the cops are going to come after you. So, like, for this, it was like, holy shit. And then there was, like, the different game mode where it's like you got to flip it around and play as the cop chasing the person, which was kind of, like, a different side of it. Like, okay, Um, because, like, the one article I read today put it perfectly where it was, like, there was an imbalance between cops and racers that, although it was imbalanced it didn't seem like it was unfair where yes, the cops were more overpowered, but the racers were so much quicker than the cops to where it was like those two things almost evened each other out. Um, I'm assuming soapy with this one, because you said you're not really into racing games. This is not going to be a game that you go ahead and pick up in November. Yeah. And it's going to be something that, you know, you know, I'll, I'll give a shout out to people who do mm-hmm. buy it, you know, more power to you. Mm-hmm. But, you know, personally for me, you know, I just don't think I'll be, uh, I don't, uh, I don't think I'll be grabbing it. Okay. Uh, the next thing that we're moving into yet again, three short things before our major topic today. Um, we're going to the Xbox soapy. And what we're talking about is the Xbox series X. Has it solved the storage problem? Um, and basically what I mean by that is there was a, um, show on YouTube that, uh, basically had major Nelson on it from, uh, from Xbox. And they were talking about the series X is storage capabilities. And one feature that the series X is going to have is that it will let you uninstall parts of games to free up storage space. And there was a part of me that was like, Holy shit, like this, this is almost like a game changing kind of thing for me for next gen, because there have been many, 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 many of times where I have gone and been like, oh, fuck, I got to download the newest game I bought. Shit, I don't have enough space for it because it's a fucking behemoth like Red Dead Redemption 2 to where it's like you can almost kind of play play around with their storage to a hey, I can, if I have a game like Red Dead that I'm going to play online, but I don't necessarily want to delete the whole game, hey, I could delete certain parts of it um, that I could just reinstall easily um, if I want to pick it up again and not have to wait hours for that to install onto my system. Or it could be, I'm thinking if it, and I don't know if it'll work like this, where it's like, okay, I want to play this part of the game, but it doesn't use some of the files or some of the, like I'm playing offline, some of the online stuff. Let me go ahead and delete some of that with the game. I wonder if the game would still run or if it would be like, no, you need everything for it. So before you, 
is this a big game changer for storage issues to where you can uninstall parts of games and necessarily not have to uninstall a full game to reinstall it if you're going to play it again? I mean, it sounds like a cool concept. My only worry is, like, for instance, and in, like we can, if we use the Red Dead Redemption thing mm-hmm. of like, does that mean I can uninstall Red Dead Online and, and stuff like that? Like, obviously, just as an example, mm-hmm. but like, yeah. if that's the case, cool, you know, because there are people who don't want to play certain games like their online mode and they just only mm-hmm. want to play offline. Yeah, you know, because for instance, like let's say I bought Call of Duty and I don't want to play multiplayer; I only want to play mm-hmm. zombies. But if you do, wait yeah. to spend sixty bucks for a a mode that you can just go buy an older one for <laughs> yeah i just like for me i wonder if that's even going to be a thing because i wonder if the game is going to have like well even though you're playing online it draws from certain files and things you know what i'm saying like yeah i even on my playstation i've never had that option to where it's like it it, it, it almost makes me think of computers where like for example world of warcraft you think like, oh, I don't use this part of it. I can delete it. And then the game breaks and the game's like, no, we need that fucking folder. Uh, but it's like, but I'm not PVP. No, we need that fucking folder um, to where I would assume it would be the same thing on like an Xbox to where it's like, if you delete something, you have to reinstall it and have the full thing installed in order to play the game. But like, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to have it to where it's like the it's going to be like a list of like, Hey, it'll have a little star next to it. If it's needed to just boot up the game at all. Um, and then a symbol for like optional parts. But like for me, this kind of the thing I like about it is if you have a behemoth like red dead, you don't have to uninstall the full thing just to reinstall it later. If you're going to go back and play it. Yeah. So I think that's something that, this is going to be a good idea. The only thing mm-hmm. is, and like you said, it's, I think they need to start, like they need to let people know, like, okay, these are files you can't delete. Cause if you yeah. delete it, who oh boy, your game ain't going to work <laughs> unless you want to load it and your game doesn't pop up when you fucking load it in. I mean, unless you're trying to make a potato, right? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I don't want to run the risk of fucking bricking my console, <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, I think doing stuff along those lines mm-hmm. are fine. Yeah. Because honestly, I remember, and I've said this before, I'm like, I've always kind of wanted the option to turn off audio files of playing a game. Because, mm-hmm. like, for instance, I use, I'm going to use Borderlands, for example. Yeah. Literally, ever since my first playthrough, I do not listen to that game with sound on. And obviously, because it's like, it's mostly I'm watching, like, podcasts, I'm listening to, like, Critical mm-hmm. Role or something like that while I'm just playing the game. Plus, you're, when you play Borderlands now, you're not playing it for the story because you've already beat it. Yeah, at this point, I'm just going through and doing mm-hmm. different builds and yeah. stuff like that. So Unless it's, like, it's, Krieg's DLC, where you're like, okay, I haven't played this part of the added-on story. Yeah. And even at that, with those ones... With some of them, I kind of just give up halfway, and not because, like, oh, the DLC's bad. I'm just like, okay, I kind of know what's, I know what's being offered to me here. Yeah. yeah. But it was with the Creek when I had to listen from fucking start to finish, because, mm-hmm. man, that DLC was great. No, I mean, moving forward with this, like, I... It's going to be one of those things where I'm going to need to see it in practice first. Um, but, like, just as a concept, I think this is kind of like... I don't want to use the word game changer and throw that out there um but this is something that like i almost like after seeing it was like a huh why wasn't this around sooner like this kind of seems like a no-brainer thing of like hey we can let you delete parts of games or uninstall parts of games um in order to reinstall other games and kind of manage your storage so like for me it was one of those i don't know if i want to throw out the word game changer um, but to me, it, it'll be interesting to see if this solves the storage problem, especially the one that many feel um, like some may have when it comes to the early um, Gen 5 kind of uh, consoles, where it's like you've got that, I think of the PlayStation, for example, the early PlayStation, I was filling that thing up like that when it came to games. Now I've got the Pro, which comes out, it came out like halfway through the generation. 
Now I don't have to worry about storage because the Pro storage is a lot bigger than the normal uh, launch PlayStation that they came out with. But Soapy, let's move on to the main meat and potato conversation for today. And this is a conversation that you actually sparked. So you and I haven't had this conversation yet, but you were like, hey, if there's ever a day where we're kind of like, there's not a lot of news like today and we need something to kind of eat up space on the show, here's an example of something. And you posted a uh, an article from uh, Lad Bible that basically was like the worst video games of all time, according to Metacritic. And their list was Deal or No Deal, Nintendo DS had a meta, meta score of 19. Alone in the Dark, Illumination, PC had a 19. Um, S-Pogs? Racing? Um, Nintendo Wii? had a score of an 18 double dragon two wander of dragons xbox 360 score of a 17 i'm just going to skip to the lowest one because there's a couple on here the lowest rating one and of course it is big rigs over the road racing with a meta critic score of an eight and the conversation i was thinking from from this was not necessarily about bad games, because like you brought up, oh, we could talk about like the worst games we ever played. And the thing I was kind of thinking is like game reviews, where back in the day when YouTube and stuff like first started, it was always when a game came out, what is IGN saying? What's G4 TV saying? Like, I need to check out the review. I need to... For example, like uh, the gaming magazines, like not Nintendo Power, but like GameStop had a magazine and shit to where it's like, okay, like Game Informer. Thank you. Where it's like, what's the latest review? What are they uh, saying about games? And the question I wanted to ask is how important are reviews right now? Because Soapy, to me, I don't think the old tried and true way of reviewing where it's like this game gets a four out of five. I don't think we need, like, I don't think game reviews have the same weight that they had in the past. And to me, I'm almost on the side of maybe game reviews in this era and moving forward are not important and are going to become less important as we move on into the future. Yeah, and I share a similar sentiment of, I think the way that we, the way that we rate games now Mm-hmm. I almost think it needs to be changed, yeah. but not in this, not in like a super insanely drastic way. Cause like, I think mm-hmm. there is still like pieces that you can use from the old system of like, Oh, you know, like, yeah, it has this, it has this, you know, mm-hmm. four out of five. Yeah. Cause the whole thing is, I think people need to look at games differently. Cause for instance, mm-hmm. like people would rate like racing games to say what you would race, like rate a story game. Yeah. To where I'd always see racing games get like four out of five, and I'm like, mm, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm just like that. That doesn't make sense to me. But also, and I will say, my biggest uh, complaint with the reviews in the gaming industry is, mm-hmm. can, can you can everyone stop paying for fucking five out of five reviews? Like, <laughs> well, it, it's like at this point, it's obvious that it happens. And that's why when it comes to the the score reviews and like metacritic exactly where it's like this game got an 18 out of 100 oh my god this game got a five out of five on da, 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 da. i think those are pointless now and the reason why i say that is there's two reasons why i go into this mindset number one is twitch number two is youtube and just the culture on youtube now where uh, i'll hit twitch first where basically Any single game, let's say, for example, Among Us, because I didn't know what that was um, until Dave told me about it back way, way back before the Internet. um, I know some of you watching this are like, Ricky, I don't remember that time, Um, but it was a time. I I tell you, I I was there for a little bit, Um, although it was like a brief seven, not even seven, like maybe six years of my life. I was there. Um but like back then, Dave, before the internet, um, basically back then it was a, hey, have you checked out this game? My blah, blah, blah. Like, for example, a lot of the things that I got fed was Dave, because he was my best friend, of, 
hey, have you checked out this game? My brother, I saw my, I watched my brother play it. My brother told me about it. For example, World of Warcraft, which this was even in the internet era of, hey, you got to check out this game. My brother got me hooked on it, where I'm not saying that doesn't happen anymore, but in the days before the internet, it was very word of mouth, where you needed, like, someone needed to play it, tell you about it, and then kind of have it spread that way. What we live in now is Twitch takes that and basically makes it to where it can be spread like that, where Dave told me about Among Us. He goes, okay, here's kind of what the game is. And then I went on Twitch and I started watching it and I could actually see someone play it. And I can kind of, it, it it's something to where it's like you can watch people play the game and you could make a choice for yourself because I feel like these, these five out of five reviews and these like actual scored number reviews, they're just kind of like bullet points to where it's like, all right, you're telling me about specific things in the game. Like for example, men, they talk about franchise. They talk about ultimate mode. They talk about some bugs. Boom. There's the game. But it's like, until you actually watch it and see it, there might be times where you watch it and you go, okay, that was something where this review made it seem totally worse than what it really was. That's number one. You can just go on Twitch and watch people play the game and get your own kind of a mindset for the game. Number two, we live more in a world where, although I don't know how I feel about the word, like I know there's some people that hate it. There's some people that like it. I'm kind of in the middle with it because I don't really like indifferent is what I'll say. We live in the days of influencers where, for example, you may watch us and you may go, hey, you know what? If I want to know about something, I'm going to watch Ricky and Soapy. Like, for example, on the sports side, oh, my God, this news dropped in the NBA. I got to see what Ricky and Dave have to say about this. Um, But there's other influencers out there like there's these podcasts that you listen to and you form a relationship with that podcast where it's like, okay, I trust you. And then they play the game. They talk about the game and then you feel like, Hey, because I have this trust in you, this, this carries more weight than a three minute video from IGN given Madden a two out of five. You know what I'm saying? Soaps. Yeah, and I almost feel like with Twitch, it kind of brings more into a... Like, I almost feel like it's like word of mouth turned up to 11. Mm -hmm. Because now, for instance, like, if I'm bored, I'll literally just scroll through Twitch. Yeah. I'll just be like, all right, I don't want to watch... Like, I don't want to watch Fortnite. I don't want to watch all these. Like, I'll I'll go to, like, the lower numbered, like, streams and Mm -hmm. everything. And I'll see... Like, I'm just throwing out a random game, like Port Royale 4, and I'm like, what the fuck is Port Royale? And I'll watch it, and I'm like, wow, you know, that game actually kind of looks pretty good. Yeah. Like, I think it's gaming is much more accessible now, obviously, Mm -hmm. because, you know, the internet does make it a lot more. Yeah. And and I also fully agree with you with the whole uh, influencer thing. Mm -hmm. I think, think like, five out of fives and stuff like that still have a place in gaming. Mm-hmm. And in reviews, because for instance, like there are people who don't want to watch people play, excuse me, don't want to watch people play the game, which I mean, to be fair, it's much more easier to watch people play. Cause like a lot of the people, like for instance, like IGN has done that since the dawn of fucking time. Yeah. Where's their place then? I'll ask you. Cause to me, I'm almost, I'm almost on the side of they have no place. I mean, it's like an introductory thing basically okay. of where. Like, when you look at a game and if you see, like, oh, five out of five, that sets your expectations high Mm -hmm. to where then it's, like, you kind of are going to judge the game accordingly. Like, if Mm -hmm. I go into a game not knowing anything, I'll be like, oh, okay, that kind of looks cool. Mm -hmm. Then if I play the game and I'm like, well, that's shit. Yeah. And the other thing I kind of even think about is, like, even though, like, I say, oh, the five out of five, I'm close to saying it has no place... Even the other side of that review, which is like, hey, I'm going to talk on this podcast or, hey, I'm going to go ahead and kind of just make a video talking about my experience with this game. There's still some flaw in that. Like, I don't think there is a per like a perfect model of like, this is how you do reviews. This is the perfect way. Everyone has to do it that way, because I even think of 
when the Avengers beta came out. Um, after I played the beta, I was like, you know what? I want to see these reviews because the influencers that got the beta before the beta came out, all I heard was, it's trash, it's trash, oh my god, it's bad, Avengers looks bad, Avengers is bad, oh my god, bad, 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 negative, negative, negative. And I watched one, and he was like listing off things, and I was almost to the point where I was like, yeah, but every I'm like, everything you're listing off, you just played the three story modes that they gave you. It sounds like you didn't dive into the other missions um, that you had playable there as well. So like, for me, it's like, yes, there's like, I like the reviews of you have so-and-so that you trust an influencer that you trust. Like for me, when I was before we started the games channel and we basically just had the MVP um, sports channel for us kind of funny was my jam. Like they were anytime they on their um, games cast would talk about a game that I was thinking about playing or that I was on the fence about. Cause let's be honest, there are games that you're like, fuck it. I'm going to buy it because you know what? I don't even care if it's bad. I'm going to play this game because I love this franchise from X, Y, and Z in the past. There are games like that, but Any game I was on the fence, I'm like, okay, I trust their opinion. I want to go ahead and kind of see what they had to say. Like, for example, when I was listening to one of their games cast about the Game Awards one year, um, JD, you bring up a great one, um, The Last of Us, Last of Us 2, even though I haven't played it yet because I'm a slacker, I bought that thing on release because I'm like, I'm going to have it. I'm going to play it at some point. But what the thing I was going into is... I was listening to a games cast. They were talking about, I think this was the game of the year 18. I think it was 2018. Um, because they were talking game of the year. And Tim said, he was talking about Celeste. And he goes, Celeste should win game of the year. And he goes, if you have not played Celeste, you need to go play Celeste. And I remember I was listening to that at my desk when I used to work uh, my college admissions job. I went home that night, Soapy. I bought Celeste and I'm glad I did because it's one of the best games I've ever played. Yeah. And obviously, you know, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's more of a gaming is such a weird, I don't want to say like a tricky mistress or anything. Yeah. Because I mean, it is in the, in the fact of sometimes like, for instance, like I'll see reviews of where people are like, Oh my God, this game's great. And I'll watch Mm -hmm. it. And I'm like, I'm like, how are these people saying this is good? I'm like, this looks like yeah. absolute garbage. Mm-hmm. And then it's vice versa. And the whole thing is, like, that's why I always say it's, I don't pay so much attention to reviews. I just mm-hmm. watch people play the game. Yeah. Like, reviews, I think, kind of give me an idea of mm-hmm. what to look for. Yeah. And I think that's kind of where, like, the five like the five out of fives, like, 100 out of 100 on Metacritic and stuff like that fits in. Mm-hmm. Of like, I don't think the overall game should be viewed as that. I think it's like certain aspects of the game should be broken down in that way. Mm-hmm. Over like, for instance, for Red Dead, like five out of five story. Yeah. Like, and then you could like knock a point off or something like four out of five for gameplay because uh, the horses are slower than my fucking grandmother. <laughs> <clears throat> horses aren't that slow. <sighs> that fucking first horse, dude. I hey, I man. almost died of boredom. Hey man, that first horse, he's a good boy. He's such a, oh, yeah, such, he, you're a good boy, good boy. Yeah, yeah, he can be a good boy all he wants when I leave, when I leave his ass in the dungeon, when I leave his ass in the snow area, when I go get the white Arabian. Dutch, what you doing, Dutch? Man, and it's, like, I personally, like, I personally think, you, like, you can't just list an entire game as a five out of five, because mm-hmm. every game has a problem. Yeah, every like, game has like, one bad part about it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, there are times that that's not the case mm-hmm. to where like, but those are so rare Yeah, that it's like, I feel like the term five out of five has just become so watered down mm-hmm. that it's like, okay, like, you know, we don't view five out of fives the way we used to mm-hmm. of where like, I'm going to use an example of, I don't, I don't think this game got five out of fives when it was coming out, but like the original doom, okay. Like doom is like the original doom is still fucking fun to play. Mm hmm in 2020 and 
like I consider that a, I'd consider that a five out of five. Like mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything really wrong with it besides like yeah, it's dated because the game's like thirty years old. Yeah. But like stuff like that, and then for instance, when I see other five out of fives, I watch it and I'm like, this game kind of looks boring a little bit. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to be like, oh, like you know, Ghost of Tsushima and all that ain't a five out of five. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. Yeah. But like. I think it's just, it's become such a broad thing of where it's, if a game's good, we want to consider it a 5 out of 5, and some mm-hmm. people can't accept hearing that, like, hey, this game could be, like, a 3.8. Yeah. Is 3.8 still above average? Yeah, I mean, for me, when it comes to reviews, I feel like the tricky part with them is the fact that I feel like it's the amount that you have to pay for games now. Like, I almost want to say if it's a free, like, I'm not even going to say that either because it's a tricky, like, it's a tricky mistress um, to where I feel like one thing that the reason why reviews are still important, I just don't think the number system, like five out of five, hundred out of a hundred, like, I don't think that matters because I would rather watch some, I would rather watch people p- talk about it um, or watch a creator that I trust talk about it, that are genuine about it, um, kind of give me their opinion because it's two things. One, some games you might have to spend, what, now 70 bucks on for the next gen? So you're spending almost uh, like $30 away from $100 per game, um, which could get costly. But then even if it's like, if it's a free game, you're still putting time into that game where I almost think of, I I know this is not gaming, but I think of like what triple H said when it came, they were talking about the network and something about something with WWE. And he goes, the one thing we have to combat more than anything is time. You got to sleep for this much time. You're at work for this much time. Um, He's like, we have such a small window of time and a day to work with of, can we capture you and bring you in? And for games, it's true also. You're sleeping for, let's say, you're one of the regular people that sleep for eight hours every night, but let's say five to eight hours. So five to eight hours you're sleeping. You're eating it sometimes, and I know some people eat while they game, but I'll be honest, I hate that because I don't want my controller all greasy and shit. Um, It just, it bugs me now. It never used to bug me as a kid or a teenager, but like, now as an old an older adult, I'm like, it fucking bugs me. When I eat, I like have to wash my hands before I go and play that because I just don't want a greasy, slimy um, controller. And it's just to the point where I feel like gaming, you have to fight for time. So even if it's a free for like a free for all game, you're still going to look at a review because it's more of like a. Yeah, I know I don't have to pay for this, but is this game even worth a minute of my time? Yeah, and I think gaming is going in such a way of where Mm -hmm. right now, like, there's almost a, like, I think games need to be judged based on what type of game they are. Yeah. I don't think they need to, like, and of course, some people. Some people are going to have a wheelhouse of racing where some people may have a wheelhouse of fighting and that plays into it too, where not every single person who has one of those high end reviews, it's like, it could be like me. If I fucking reviewed Minecraft, I might not give it a good enough score because Minecraft isn't a game for me. I was going to say, if you give anything Minecraft less than anything but a five that I have to, I'd have to murder you. More like a 4.972. Eh, still too low. <laughs> but go ahead before I cut you off what you were going with. No, no, but it's like, and the reason, and this is why, honestly, I'll even say, and I'm going to sound like the biggest fucking hater because I really don't like this company anymore. Mm-hmm. The reason why I think IGN shouldn't be a thing anymore is just because of the fact of what IGN does, everyone does at this point. Mm-hmm. with game reviews like yeah. there's really nothing about ign that makes them special anymore mm-hmm. and it's because like for instance i could watch like i can watch youtube and see the game clips yeah like i can see someone explain the game to me i can watch like things released about it mm-hmm. i don't need to watch ign put a random person in there 
and just give the game a four out of five mm-hmm. after explaining like two good things about the game. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's like I said, like it's, I don't think we need the five out of fives anymore, but I think we do need people just talking about games and giving their opinion. And um, like those kind of reviews, I think are where we're headed. Um, any final thoughts with the soaps before we uh, wrap up the show? Uh, no, that's basically it. Just, uh, okay. IGN stop giving paid reviews. <laughs> no one cares that you got, I, I don't care. Just stop giving every game. You play a five out of five because the company paid you to say it. And that's another thing of like, I feel like, I feel like another, that's another reason why like the five out of five reviews don't matter to me is because like you're paying for that five out of five. We can tell you're paying for that five out of five. Um, and even if let's say they're like, okay, we're just going to pay for a good review from X creator. Let's be honest though. Like most of the time, most people you can tell, all right, they're, they're full of shit right now. Yeah, like, I mean, okay. They are not genuine about it. this. Yeah. Cause it's either, I don't remember which halo game it was. It was either mm-hmm. halo four or halo five got five out of fives from like every company that got to play it before the game even came mm-hmm. out. And before the public saw anything. Yeah. And I'm like, hmm, not going to lie, home dog. That sounds, that sounds, that's a little sus. Before orange is a little sus. Is that what our green is a little sus? Cause it was Xbox. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, hmm, three, four, three is a little <laughs> sus right now. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I just reviews. It was, this was a conversation where I'm like, huh, it got me thinking about reviews and like where we're, where we're at as a, uh, gaming, uh, culture and kind of where we're headed in the review space. Um, going forward. Cause like, I don't think Twitch and anything are dying anytime soon. Um, but that's going to do it for MVP games live this Monday, October 5th. Make sure to join the discord link down below in the description or exclamation discord and Twitch, our Twitch chat gets you into that great discord talking with all the real MVPs, all the patrons, all the boys, everyone from the real MVP family in one spot. Um, if you want to support us, patreon.com backslash MVP vids, is the way to do that. You can also support us by throwing us a sub or a prime gaming sub uh, on our Twitch channel, which we are live every Monday through Friday at twitch.tv backslash MVP vids. But we are also on YouTube at MVP entertainment. Soapy and I will be back tomorrow for another edition, the Tuesday edition of MVP games live for those Twitch folks uh, up right now. Sports Live with Dave and I are coming up next. I want to thank you for giving us a bit of your time on this Monday, October 5th. Like I said, we'll be back tomorrow. And as always, have a good day, everybody. Bye.